Good morning and welcome to the regular meeting of City Council for Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. Meeting announcements, Council will continue to meet virtually until further notice. All meetings will be cablecast on the City Channel and live streamed on the City Channel Pittsburgh YouTube channel. Will the clerk please take the roll? Reverend Burgess. Here. <coughs> Mr. Coghill. Here. Ms. Gross. Here. Mr. Krause. Here. Mr. Lavelle. Here. Mr. O'Connor. Here. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. Mrs. Kelsey, President. Here. Nine members present. Thank you. Our next order of business, well, I'm sorry. As we join from our remote locations, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Our next order of business is proclamation, and we have proclamations. We have one from Councilman Kraus that he would like to read. Oh. Uh, thank you, Madam President. You caught me a little off guard there. Do I see Rob Conroy here? Uh, you, you do, under Allison. Do. And Allison, I see. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this morning. This is supposed to be a bit of a surprise. I hope it, it is. is. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right under my name. Yeah, we would like very much to recognize the work of uh, Rob Conroy and the uh, his uh, efforts through his employment with Ceasefire. And so this morning we have a uh, very special proclamation from the council, uh, and I'd like to read it as follows. Whereas over the last 10 years, Rob Conroy has dedicated his career to advocating for the enactment of sensible legislation, legislative firearm reform and improved protection for victims. And whereas leaving his tenure at Ceasefire PA as the director of organizing, Ron bega Rod, Rob began building up the community's voice by hitting the pavement, organizing and circulating petitions in a number of Pittsburgh neighborhoods. And whereas by being part of the fabric of the community, Rob was able to not only educate community members, but to empower them, always striving to give voice to those directly impacted by gun violence. And whereas Rob has spent his decade at Ceasefire PA, forging strong relationships and partnerships between the community and survivors and local and regional leaders to, perform, to form productive coalitions. And whereas Rob's contributions can be seen in the work accomplished and the milestones reached. And whereas without organizations like Ceasefire PA and without Rob's tireless organizing, momentous occasions like the Commonwealth's Adoption Act of 79, which expands mechanisms needed to protect victims from gun violence, who would most likely have not come to fruition. And whereas furthermore, Ceasefire PA and Rob were important partners throughout the legislative and drafting process when in 2018, the city of Pittsburgh proposed its own sensible gun legislation. So now therefore be it resolved that this council of the city of Pittsburgh thanks and commends Rob Conroy for his work and his dedication to the cause of enacting local and national sensible gun legislation, and be it even further resolved that this council of the city of Pittsburgh hereby declares today, Tuesday, March the 9th, 2021, to be Rob Conroy Day in the city of Pittsburgh. Thank you, Councilman. Can we have a motion to approve in a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Rob. Any comments, Councilman? Yeah, uh, I'd like to hear from Rob if that would be okay, and Alice. I, absolutely, absolutely. I, I don't know. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, I, I no idea what to say other than wow, thank you. I never uh, anticipated this or anything like this. Uh, 
during my work really, or after I left. So, I mean, it, it just means a lot to me. And I mean, I really uh, valued working with all of you uh, that, you know, with whom I got to work at least over the last 10 years. And uh, I really uh, value uh, friendships I made with, with, with many of you and just the partnership. And uh, I couldn't have done it without you know, good people in government and without good people out there that wanted to actually make some kind of a change. I can't honestly vouch for massive change, but you know, it always felt like an uphill battle. And all I can say is I hope that it continues and you know, we actually do have a safer world someday. And if I did something to contribute to that, then I'm happy and thank you for this. I'm, I'm genuinely touched. So yes. thank you. Allison, would you like to offer anything? <laughs> uh, just uh, thank you very much for recognizing his hard work and uh, for inviting us here today. And uh, just uh, keep up the good work to all of you. And thanks for having us here. It's been a, uh, a long and fruitful relationship, Rob. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it started off as a working relationship that turned into a friendship and one that I personally will always treasure. And, uh, and it was uh, an honor to work side by side with you and Ceasefire PA uh, with our common goals of, of just implementing uh, when and wherever possible sensible gun legislation. And uh, we're gonna miss you greatly, uh, but that doesn't mean you're leaving. No, I'm around. I'm in Representative Kincaid's office now. So I'm just across the uh, river right there in uh, Councilman Wilson's district where I reside. Uh, so I'll open it to other members if they wish to make comment. Everybody good? I just want to thank you for his work and wish him well in, in um, Representative uh, Kincaid's office. Yeah, thanks, Council President. Thank Thanks. you. I'd love to say just a few words. I, um, you know, first of all, Councilman Krauss, I know that long before the 2019 legislation, you worked with um, Ceasefire and Rob and among an, uh, other organizations on um, sensible gun legislation. So I want to thank you for your longstanding work on this issue. And Rob, um, this, I can't think of someone more deserving after 10 years working in the trenches on a really challenging issue that you know, I know is, is a drain personally on anyone who works on it in a lot of ways. Um, I'm glad that you are getting recognition that you deserve. And uh, it's been just a pleasure working with you and getting to know you and becoming your friend um, through some really you know challenging times in the last few years. And I wish you nothing but the best, but I know we'll stay in touch. Absolutely. Likewise uh, to, to, to you and to Councilman Krauss there. And uh, Madam President. I think I see Madam President O'Connor. Sorry, yeah, yeah I just want to- For Councilman O'Connor to come on, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, every once in a while. Um, no, I think, uh, you know, Rob, I just want to thank you for all the hard work. Um, Councilman Krause, you know, started with the sensible gun laws years ago about lost and stolen, working with Councilman Strasburger and all of council the last year or so plus on our sensible gun laws. Wouldn't have happened without you and organizing support for those uh, pieces of legislation. So just thank you for all your hard work. And I'm sure we'll work together soon. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman. Our relationship goes back as far as when now Mayor Peduto served as Councilman Peduto and uh, writing the um, lost and stolen legislation, I believe it was 2008. So that's uh, 13 years. That's, uh, that's quite a relationship. Anybody else wish to offer up? Councilwoman Gross, thanks. Just a brief thank you to all of you all, to Rob and to Allison, to all of the members of council for, for working on those laws that have made us safer as a city. Really appreciate all the work past and present. Thank you. Thanks Councilman, thank you. All right, well, it's uh, Rob Conroy day in the city of Pittsburgh. So uh, go so cut funny. a rug and uh, have lunch and uh, enjoy the day. And thank you, on, sincerely, from the heart. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. All the best. Thanks, Madam President. Thank you for letting me do that. Thank you. And now we have a uh, few proclamations for myself, too, for myself, Madam Clark, to be read into the record. Council President Kel Smith presents Bill number 1288. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby commend and congratulate 
Eagle Scout Dante Green for his outstanding achievement of attaining the rank of Eagle Scout and be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh is hereby declared Sunday, March 14, 2021 to be Eagle Scout Dante Green Day in the City of Pittsburgh and Bill number 1289. Now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby commend and congratulate Eagle Scout Samuel James Sinkowitz for his outstanding achievement of attaining the rank of Eagle Scout and be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Sunday, March 14, 2021 to be Eagle Scout Samuel James Sinkowitz Day in the City of Pittsburgh. <coughs> approve in a second. So moved. Second, please. Second. So thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Proclamations are approved. And now we have a, a will of counsel. Do you have that, Madam Clerk? Yes. Do you want it read? It's an entirety. No, just the. Just, just the answer. last. Thing? Yeah. Okay. Council President Kel Smith presents. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh <laughs> does hereby address the United States Congress and the Pennsylvania General Assembly. <laughs> And be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby call for immediate action to raise the minimum wage to $15. I have a motion to approve and a second. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any discussion? No next thing. It's approved. Then our next order of business is uh, public comment. I would like to remind everyone that the rules of council state that comments are limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberations, which are or may be before city council. Profanity is not permitted, nor are threats. Uh, we, may we have the first speaker, please. The first speaker is Anthony Tassoun, followed by Leticia Alcaraz. Thank you. Anthony? I do not see him. Next speaker is Leticia Alcaraz. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me well? Yes, good morning. Okay, perfect. Well, first of all, thank you all for this opportunity for being able to speak here today. Um, it's a beautiful day, so I hope we can all enjoy it. I sent last night a copy of my testimony. So hopefully if you have any doubts after I speak, you can check that out and I'll answer all of your questions. My name is Leticia Alcaraz, and I'm a student at La Roche University. Some of you might have heard of it, but I am here today speaking as an ambassador for the Borgen Project, which for those who don't know, is a national organization that is working to make global poverty a focus of US foreign policy. So today I'll be focusing on the International Affairs Budget, which is one of our main focuses in our work. Uh, many people don't realize that the International Affairs Budget actually has a very big direct impact on the US economy and even specifically in Pennsylvania. So as a result, the funds given to the international affairs budget only amount to less than 1% of the total federal budget. And I think that's a big issue because the development programs funded by the international affairs budget um, actually help raise the standard of living in poor countries. And when that happens, their citizens are able to screen, increase their spendings and therefore they become avid consumers of American products and services. Uh, which helps grow the American economy and create jobs. And in the case of Pennsylvania, the impact on the economy is really clear. Um, according to a report from the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition, Pennsylvania is one of the top 10 states in the country for experts, and it generated over $42 billion worth of experts in 2019, uh, with two major city centers in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Almost 16,000 Pennsylvania companies export goods across the globe each year, and 89% of those companies are small and medium-sized businesses. Um, moreover, in Pennsylvania, over 1.5 million jobs were supported by trade in 2018, which uh, represents 20% of all jobs in the state. So those are pretty big numbers, um, but even more, the support for international affairs budget has been growing in the past years. And for instance, in 2017, more than 200 major companies sent a letter to Congress urging that the international affairs budget be protected 
Um, as all but 5% of the world's consumers live outside the United States, and many of the fastest growing economies are in, developing, in the developing world, this business leaders believe it is in the economic interests of their companies for the U.S. to increase foreign aid, spending, and address poverty. So um, to sum up, it is clear that international trade benefits our state's economy and creates more jobs, and that numerous major companies share this view. Um, but to be able to stimulate that tra trade, I think that first we need to invest in poor countries, which are our consumers. So the main point that I want to convey today is that we need to stop thinking of the international affairs budget as aid. It's actually an investment that is very positive for both poor countries and Americans. So I am here today uh, because I'd like to ask the Pittsburgh City Council to send a letter to Senator Robert Casey, uh, Senator Patrick Toomey, and our representative Connor Lamb. Letting them Next speaker is Ann Wright, followed by Aikohana Halmakina. Ann Wright. It's here. Is there anyone waiting? I don't see any speakers. Next speaker is Aikohana Halmakina. Oh, she's getting on. I see her now. Greetings. Greetings of peace, light, and love. My title is Ikahana Hal Makina. I am the Grand Inca of the Iroquois Confederacy of Aboriginal American people. Our people, the indigenous people of America, such as myself, are born free with the right to enjoy life and to live freely and to enjoy our liberties and to be safe and secure here in America, our home. Our people as a community, as a nation, must not be exposed to violence. Our people have the right not to be assimilated, meaning we have the right not to be forced to take up someone else's culture and their way of life. We have the right to preserve our culture, our customs, and our traditions without insight, outside influence. We are not to be discriminated against because we are not citizens or residents. America is our home. You do not have the right to force titles upon us. We are not black. We are not African-American. We are not Negro. We are not colored, nor are we people of color. Who are you to question our heritage, our lineage? If someone is from Europe and they say that they are Italian, no one questions that. So why must our lineage and our heritage be the seat question? Our people may not and must not be removed or relocated by force from our land. Our land is not to be developed without our free prior and informed consent. We must not experience the pressure to move from our land. We must be informed before any decisions are made and any ground is taken. To do so goes against the international laws and treaties. We have the right to return to our land and to steward our land, also to protect and preserve our sacred places and spaces. Governments and municipalities, such as the city of Pittsburgh, shall work with us to ensure our land and our rights and our culture, our artifacts, our traditions, our customs are respected in our land. After all, this is our home, the home of our mother's 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 mother. So we are the heirs of this land and we must be protected. So it is your duty, City Council, to ensure that international law backs you. The Constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, supports it. Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3. And I quote, and excluding Indians, not tax. You have the legis legislation. 
you have the legal precedent that has been set. Next speaker is Robert Danewood, followed by Jacob Klinger. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Robert Danewood. Um, I'm a resident of Mount Washington. Um, I'm also a, an affordable housing and community development lawyer here in Pittsburgh. Um, it, I'm, I'm speaking today to thank council for what you did last week. Uh, thank you for um, unanimously voting to approve uh, an eviction moratorium um, to, to you know, protect uh, the citizens of this, of, of this city as uh, the county court moratorium um, uh, expired. Uh, thank you for doing it quickly in time to, um, you know, uh, to line up with the expiration of the county court moratorium uh, and to get, to get ahead of the judgments for possession that have been um, racking up uh, and that can result in people being put out on the street um, and, and that are resulting in people being put out on, uh, on the street. Uh, I, I, I do want to say, though, that, um, you know, it, well, and, and, and also, I mean, thank you for creating a, a preventative approach to an eviction moratorium and not a reactive and punitive approach where landlords get fined after the fact. I mean, you know, thank you for creating, creating a, uh, a system where landlords can find out before they take an action whether or not they are subject to the moratorium. Um, but, but I do want to say that, uh, you know, one of the consequences of acting as quickly as council did, and again, thank you for acting so quickly, is that the infrastructure is not yet in place to implement the moratorium. It's vitally important that the Pittsburgh Commission on Human Relations have sufficient funding to, um, uh, to, put, to, to ramp up, to get the capacity in place and, and to um, begin implementing this moratorium. And so I urge you to take up that issue as expeditiously as possible. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Jacob Klinger. He's on the phone. Hey all. Uh, my name is Jacob. My pronouns are he and him. I'm with the Pittsburgh Union of Regional Mentors. Um, I wanted to also thank you for passing the legislation that you did last week and also congratulate you on, on having done a good thing. And, and I hope that it felt good to do it. Um, you know, a special shout out to, to Lindsay Powell, who probably saved both you all and us from worse outcomes. Um, we heard a lot at the end of, of last week's discussion about respecting this process and, you know, the number of people that turned out for it and will continue to turn out for it as we see it through uh, is a big part of that. Now, we do need to say actually work, um, and that's why I'm calling urging y'all to, to fund the Pittsburgh Commission on Human Relations. Uh, my understanding is they need about $150,000. Um, you know, yesterday alone, there were judgments for plaintiffs, so against tenants, in three different council districts in the city. Um, I think all but one of those was a simple situation that this order is supposed to solve. It was just about money, um, but it was not able to be solved because this isn't actually up and running yet, and the Commission on Human Relations uh, needs to be able to. Um, you know, y'all literally saved lives with the thing you did last week, um, but if we don't, fix the small budget hole here. Um, it will cost you the lives that you saved. Um, again, it's $150,000. Um, we know that there's, uh, I think, around a couple hundred million dollars coming to the city from the federal government um, in legislation that should pass the House today. Um, you know, we, we did hear a lot about uh, not wanting to give people false hope last week. Um, but if we don't follow through in the ways that we need to, that's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, we did hear a lot of encouraging things from, from most of you then and since about being committed to sorting this out. Um, this, is, this is also simple. We know you're able to do it. Um, the only thing that really gives us pause right now is there wasn't a lot of fanfare. It doesn't seem like there's been a lot of like uh, information to magistrates making sure they know about this. Um, there wasn't a ton of fanfare Friday when the mayor signed this in. Uh, which is unusual. Um, 
we can obviously like forgive all of that um, and are certainly not interested in relitigating why the budget priorities are what they are right now and why the civil rights division of the city is underfunded. Um, you also don't have to uh, because we can solve this quickly and urgently. Um, and we just fully expect you to. Um, that's my time. The next speaker is Jennifer Lines, followed by Clara Weevil. Hey, all, can you hear me? Yes. Lovely. Hi, I'm calling in to congratulate you because you did the right thing. Yay! I promised I would do it last week and now here I am. Uh, I was going to sing you a song, but I don't know how to play guitar. Uh, and my partner tried to teach me and it didn't really work. So with that in mind, I'm just going to run through a series of questions for you that are, you know, fun and light and relevant, I promise. And I know you can't talk back to me, but I do hope you will consider addressing them in, uh, in this city council meeting or in the future. Um, first of all, <laughs> Councilperson Gross, how did you get so cool? Uh, to all of city council, do you have health insurance or life insurance or whatever the three people were trying to sell you last week on the call? I have honestly never considered this before and it's been really bothering me since, so I hope you're all taken care of. Uh, to President Kale Smith, does playing the guitar count as public comment? Um, this is also a thing that I hadn't considered until last week. Um, for all of you, did you know that the Pittsburgh Commission on Human Relations only needs $150,000 to up their staffing in order to carry out the role that you gave to them? I know you heard it now. Now you know it again. That's an absolute steal given things that we, you know, budget for like police because this folks, these folks actually do things. Um, Bobby, does it stress you out when people call you Bobby or do you prefer Councilperson Wilson uh, when speakers are calling in. Uh, to Councilperson Krause, I, I must know, what is the name of your cat? Um, and are they seeking re-election? Um, it takes a really brave feline to abstain from any votes, um, taking the stance that there's not enough provisions for wet food. And I find that to be a really noble position. Um, and they do have my vote if they seek to run again. Uh, P.S. Heather Gray, I also would like to know your cat's name. I did not know you had a cat until this morning when I logged in early. For all of you again, did you know that the really phenomenal legislation that you passed last week will only work if you fully staff the commission? And also, did you know uh, that Pittsburgh is due to get a, about $200 million from the American Rescue Plan Act? They're voting on it today. I'm no expert on math. That does sound like enough for me. Uh, to Representative Burgess, or Councilperson Burgess, rather, uh, I understand why we like to play the hits. Um, and certainly claiming that those who oppose your pro-gentrification cowardice are a small group of activists has worked for you pretty well before, but don't you think you should actually attend public comment uh, in meetings in which you use that tired line? By the way, the word you're looking for is organizers, and the only reason that you or anyone else think that we are small is because you hold city council meetings during working hours on a Tuesday. Let's be very real about that. Um, also, Half of the findings for plaintiff were in your council. So that's their yesterday, which is kind of terrifying given that you wanted to delay this for a week. Uh, back to everyone. Um, did you know that a lawsuit does not make a law invalid? I assume you do, but now you really know. And you also know that we expect you to stand behind your legislation accordingly. You did the right thing. I'm so happy. We're all so happy you are protecting your constituents. Do we have any further speakers? Member Clara Weeble. I don't see. That concludes the speakers. Thank you so much for your help. Mm -hmm. And that moves us on to seeing no further registered speakers. We'll move on to our next order of business, which is uh, the presentation of papers. Uh, we have Councilman Burgess, Chair of Urban Recreation. No new papers, Madam President. Thank you. Good morning. Councilman Coghill, Chair of Public Works. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coghill presents Bill Number 1267, Ordinance Amending the City of Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances at Title IV, Public Places and Property, Article One, Public Right-of-Way, Chapter 416, Obstructions, Sections 416.20, approval process for a sidewalk cafe, including permits and fees to further extend the effectiveness of certain temporary expedited measures for the city of Pittsburgh 
sidewalk cafe permit application process through December 31st, 2021. Bill number 1268, resolution further amending resolution number 647 entitled resolution adopting and approving the 2021 capital budget and the 2021 CDBG program and the 2021 through 2026 capital improvement program by increasing bridge upgrades by $190,000. Bill number 1269, resolution approving the recommendation made by the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure that Hermitage Street be paved with asphalt in accordance with section 41706 of the Code of Ordinances. Bill number 1270, resolution providing for a reimbursement agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for costs associated with the construction phase of the 30th Street Bridge construction project and providing for the payment of municipal incurred costs not to exceed $1,600,000 and the municipal share of Commonwealth incurred costs not to exceed $2,500. Bill number 1271, resolution authorizing the mayor and directors of the Department of Public Works and the Department of Finance on behalf of the city to enter into a lease agreement with Beaver Avenue Associates LLC to provide a leased space at 1301 Beaver Avenue for the purposes of housing the facilities maintenance division of the Department of Public Works for the total cost not to exceed $266,616, including utilities over a two year period with an option for two one-year extensions, if necessary, at the same lease rate. And then you have a waiver rule eight. Yes, Madam President, I uh, request a waive rule eight on bill number 27, 1271, so it can be um, on tomorrow's agenda. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Discussion? Madam, Madam President and uh, Councilman uh, Coghill, <laughs> think there for a minute. Could I ask your indulgence, please, on Bill 1267? Uh, it, it is to provide relief uh, to struggling food beverage businesses uh, it, as it relates to their sidewalk cafes. That's a that's an easy one for us to pass. The, the food and beverage has taken such a huge hit, and I'd really like to to get the extension in place as quickly as possible. So Councilman, could we waive yes. the rules on 1267 as well? Absolutely, Councilman Krause. Uh, motion to waive the rules, rule eight on bill number 1267. For Thanks Councilman, and I'll second it. We second, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay, both bills will appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. Thanks everybody. Thank you. And Councilwoman Gross, Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. Madam President. Thank you. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1272, Resolution Adopting Plan Revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewer Facilities Plan for proposed land development located at 3209 and 3211 Dobson Street. Bill Number 1273, Resolution Adopting Plan Revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewer Facilities Plan for Catherine Terrace at 618, 620, 622, 624 Elmore Street, and 621, 623, 625, 627 Perry Street. Bill number 1272, resolution adopting plan revision to the city of Pittsburgh's official sewer facilities plan for 5007 Little Street, 15 Ward. Bill number 1275, resolution providing for an agreement with the Fair Housing Partnership of Greater Pittsburgh to provide training on the Fair Housing Act to staff of the City of Pittsburgh, the Urban Redevelopment Authority and or Housing Authority of the City and to private landlords operating in the city and to provide quarterly presentations and technical assistance on the Fair Housing Act to staff of the City of Pittsburgh, the URA and or Housing Authority of the City in an amount not to exceed $259,000. Thank you. And Councilman Krause, Chair of Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Krause presents Bill number 1279, 
resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Human Resources and Civil Service to enter into a professional services agreement and or contract with NeoGov for the upgrade and continual maintenance of software for HR workforce, work, workforce management applicants tracking and civil service testing and providing for the payment of costs thereof not to exceed $88,000. $698.41. And Councilman LaBell, Chair of Finance and Law. Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman LaBell presents Bill number 1276, resolution providing for the issuance of a warrant in the total sum of $55,000 in favor of Will L. and Todd J. Hollis, Esquire, as final settlement of all claims, costs, and fees for the plaintiff only in the police related action filed in the US District Court, which has been pending in multiple stages of litigation since 2015. Bill number 1277, resolution authorizing the issuing of a warrant in favor of Joanne Dohur and her attorney Bernard Caputo, Esquire in the amount of $12,500 in full and final settlement of litigation filed in the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County. Bill number 1278, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into a professional services agreement with Chris Boyle Law Enforcement Consulting LLC for professional consultant services in connection with litigation in an amount not to exceed $13,000. Thank you. And Councilman O'Connor, Chair of Public Safety Services. No new papers, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. And Councilwoman Strasburger, Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. No new papers, Madam President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Wilson, Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. No new papers, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. And myself, I have um, seven appointments and one communication. Let's take uh, communication first. Council President Kel Smith presents Bill number 1287, communication from Kevin Paulus, Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting an acting pay approval on behalf of the Department of Parks and Recreation for Edward Ulrich, per the act and pay policy revised in June of 2018. Motion to read, receive, and file. And a second, please. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any discussion? And then we can we have the um, appointments, please, the com for the Commission on Racial Equity. Council President also presents Bill Number Twelve Eighty, Resolution appointing Councilman Reverend Ricky Burgess as a member of the Commission on Racial Racial Equity. Councilman Burgess will serve in one of two seats reserved for members of the council whose district contains a prominent number of racial minorities. Bill number 1281, resolution appointing Councilman R. Daniel Lavelle as a member of the Commission of Racial Equity. Councilman Lavelle will serve in one of two seats reserved for members of the council whose district contains a prominent number of racial minorities. Bill number 1282, resolution appointing Councilman DeWitt Walton as a member of the Commission on Racial Equity. Councilman Walton would serve in a seat reserved for a member of Allegheny County Council, whose district contained a significant number of city residents who are racial minorities. Bill number 1283, resolution appointing State Representative Jake Wheatley as a member of the Commission on Racial Equity. Representative Wheatley will serve in a seat reserved for a member of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Bill number 1284, resolution appointing Jam Hammond as a member of the Commission on Racial Equity. Director Hammond will serve in a seat reserved for the Executive Director of the Pittsburgh Commission on Human Relations. Bill number 1285, resolution appointing Majestic Lane as a member of the Commission on Racial Equity. Mr. Lane will serve in a seat reserved for the Chief Equity Officer of the City. Bill number 1286, resolution appointing Jared Doas as a member of the Commission on Racial Equity. Mr. Doas will serve in the seat reserved for a representative of the Office of the Member 
of the United States House of Representatives, whose district contains the largest portion of the city as measured by population and will represent the United States Congressman Mike Dole. Thank you. Can, um, Motion to approve. approve. Yes, second. Any discussion? And so Good. I just think, okay, and I, I don't think we want to interview, correct? No. Uh, I don't. Thank you, Madam President. Making sure. Okay, I don't either. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. No, thank good, you. all good appointments. Thank you. Okay. And so they're all approved too. We, we voted right. We said all in favor. Not yet. Okay, we didn't vote yet. All, all right. in favor. Hi. 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 Thank, thank you. And they're all approved. Madam President. Thank you. And that, yes, Councilman. I didn't want to say anything until after we approved it, but the the commission, these are just the city members. It will probably double or something or so in size that it will now um, select community representatives to be co-chairs and they will come back. I think they come back before you, but that's the work of the commission will start, but then it will now expand to committees and to members of the public. Thank you. And our Next order of business is the reports of committee for final action. Um, we have Councilman Coghill, Committee on Public Works. Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coghill presents Bill number 1264, Report of the Committee on Public Works for March 3rd, 2021, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1220, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Department of Public Works to enter into a first amendment to the, to the agreement between the city and Victor Stanley Inc. for litter can monitoring software and hardware components by increasing the total allocation to $380,145. Bill number 1221, resolution granting unto 2614 Smallman Associates LP, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct maintain and use at their own cost and expense to install light fixtures in entry canopy, exterior facade cladding, and a set of existing stairs at 211 26th Street in the second ward, seventh council district of the city. Bill number 1222, resolution granting unto Gala Limited Partnership, <coughs> their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct maintain and use at their own cost and expense to project in size a shed style awning and two existing light fixtures at 2112 Penn Avenue in the second ward seven council district. Bill number 1223, resolution granting unto Pendantic LLC their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain and use at their own cost and expense an existing concrete block planter at 110 South Atlantic Avenue in the 8th Ward 7 Council District. Bill number 1224, resolution granting unto 610 Wood Street Partners LLC, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a projecting blade sign at 610 Wood Street in the 2nd Ward Six Council District. Bill number 1225, resolution providing for a supplemental reimbursement agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for costs associated with the CBD signals project and providing for the payment of municipal incurred costs thereof, not to exceed $2,494,000, reimbursable at 80%, and the municipal share of Commonwealth incurred costs not to exceed $12,000, a zero increase from the previous agreement. Bill number 1226, resolution amending resolution 107 of 2019, which was entitled resolution providing for a contract and or agreements providing for the planning, design, repairs, maintenance, improvement, emergencies, operations, and or the purchase of materials, equipment, and supplies in connection with the production of the complete street design guidelines and associated projects to increase the total not to exceed to $488,971 for payment of work performed by Utah Inc. 
Two persons in the discussion, title of the bills, or is there any discussion on the bills? Hmm. Seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage will vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Uh, no on Bill 1220 and I on all others. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mr. Krause? Aye. Mr. Laval. <clears throat> Mr. O'Connor? Aye. Ms. Strasberger? Aye. Mr. Wilson? <coughs> Mrs. Kelsmith, President? Aye. On Bill 1220, ayes eight, noes one. All other bills, ayes nine, noes zero. The bills haven't received the legally required number of votes are mm -hmm. finally passed. And this is on to Councilman Bobby Wilson, Committee on Land Use and Economic Development. Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Councilman Wilson presents Bill number 1265, report to the Committee on Land Use and Economic Development for March 3rd, 2021, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1230, resolution further amending resolution number 840 of 2019, entitled Resolution Adopting and Approving the 2020 Capital Budget and the 2020 CDBG Program, mm -hmm. 2020 through 2025 Capital Improvement Program by restoring war memorials to war memorials and public art. You're muted, Madam President. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills, any discussion on the bills? Seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. Those in favor of the passage will vote aye when their name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Kraus. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Jossberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith, President. Aye. Mrs. Kale Smith, President. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. Thank you. The bills haven't received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. And that brings us to Councilwoman Deborah Gross, Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Madam President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill number 1266, Report of the Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs for March 3rd, 2021, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1227, Resolution Adopting Plan Revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewer Facilities Plan for the 3250 Liberty Avenue. Bill number 1228, Resolution Adopting Plan Revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewer Facilities Plan for the 3213 through 3215 Kent Avenue. Bill number 1229, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Sewer Facilities Plan for the Gupta Butler Street Project. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills. Is there any discussion on the bills? Seeing none, the bills are ready for final passage or final action, all in favor of the passage will vote aye when the name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Laval. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kelsmith, President. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. Thank you. Bills have received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. And that moves us on to motions and resolutions. And I have a meeting announcement, a uh, few meeting announcements. Uh, Council will meet tomorrow morning, Wednesday, March 10th, for the standing committee's meeting at 10 a.m. To register to speak, please fill out the sign up form in its entirety on the council meeting webpage by 9 a.m. Wednesday morning. You may also register by calling the city clerk's office at 412-255-2138 
by the registration deadlines. On Thursday, March 11th, with, the, with sessions at 10, 8, 10 and 10.30 a.m., Council will hold a briefing to discuss the PWSA new customer assistance program. On Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m., Council will hold a Cablecast post agenda mm -hmm. discussion on the HIV AIDS Commission. And that'll be chaired by Councilman O'Connor, I believe. And tomorrow's um, Council meeting and, and Thursday's post agenda can be viewed via the City Channel Pittsburgh's YouTube channel and on the com and on Comcast channels 13 and 14 and Verizon channel Verizon channels 44 and 45. Do we have anything from members? Madam um, President? Yes. Good. I'm sorry, who did you call on? No, that's okay. Go Councilman Gross. I'll go after. Councilman. Thank you. I appreciate it. I just wanted to update members a little bit about um, the work on the evictions moratorium. Um, it's actually been a very busy week. Um, as you may have heard, the mayor signed the legislation on Friday. Um, I also had a series of meetings on Thursday with um, uh, kind of parts of the evictions um, groups that are on the grounds and um, with the Human Relations Commission. And we've really sketched out an implementation plan in um, just this seven, last seven days. Um, and I even had a meeting with Councilwoman Strasburger over the weekend, updating her about it. Um, we talked a lot last week about proactive communications and some of that is already in process, both kind of what the contents and the FAQs would be and how to distribute those um, using existing networks and resources and developing kind of what, what are stakeholder groups. Um, we talked a lot about how the um, policies and procedures, there are already drafts of them um, in place, which is incredibly helpful so that with new flow charts uh, that would be on our city side about so people have um, no confusion about what paths they go to. Um, and then we have also been talking about where are various funds. Um, and, and I wanna to speak to the dollar amounts. Those were not the dollar amounts that we had been working with um, on my desk, at least in my sketching of uh, capacity building, uh, because I, I think we have various scenarios that we can do where there are kinds of capacities that we have in the administration um, for intake, for document um, tracking, those kinds of things that may not have to fall inside of the Human Relations Commission. So um, more on that soon. I just wanted to let you know that there are um, a lot of momentum, actually. A lot has been accomplished in the last week. So I just appreciate everybody pitching in um, and carrying the ball in the ways that they can. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Any other members? Yes, please. Yes, Councilman Krause. Hi. Thank you, Madam President. So I'm sure many of you are following uh, the news and a press release that went out yesterday. Uh, for the last three years, uh, myself, um, the Belt Super Consensus Group, uh, the um, Heinz Endowments, Birmingham Foundation, uh, Mayor Peduto, the URA, have been working to um, begin the process of restoring the Belt Super School. The school is a hundred, a little over a hundred years old, uh, and it sits on the National Historic Registry of uh, historic and important places. And I don't know if any of you have ever seen the school. It's easy to Google um, and find a picture, but it is one of the most magnificent structures uh, that we have in the city. And so we have worked collectively very, very hard to um, secure the building, uh, and with the help of the Heinz Endowments and Birmingham Foundation have tightened the building up to protect it from any further harm. And with the assistance of uh, Mayor Peduto and the URA, uh, we have uh, launched our request for proposal to begin the process of hiring contractors to restore the building to what we're calling aging in place and community space. Uh, and so yesterday after three years of work, um, it turned out to be an incredibly exciting day. And we have about, I think it's two months to receive the request for proposal and then the review process and so forth and so on. But it appears that in very, very early 2022, we could physically have shovels in the ground and a contract signed to actually begin the restoration of this magnificent building. 
uh, located in this magnificent neighborhood. Uh, and so it was just a really exciting time. And I just wanted to share that uh, with members in case you missed that yesterday and just the, the viewing public at large. It's a really, really exciting day. And a lot of uh, cooperation uh, has paid off and we're about to launch a pretty magnificent project. So thank you for letting me share that. Thank you. Very, thank you. Good luck, Councilman. Thank you. The other members. <clears throat> Same. Uh, President. Yes, Councilman Coghill. No, I just I just wanted to acknowledge Councilman Krause. There's a lot of shovels going in the grounds up on that side of the hill this next year or two. So, so I think there's going to be a lot of great improvements in the you know Belts, Hoover, Mount Oliver, Bon Air area. So, uh, looking forward to it, and just wanted to congratulate him. Isn't there something taking place in Knoxville very soon too, Councilman? That's right. I think we have what is that? April 1st, and that's no joke. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure, I'd love to talk about it. We, yeah. we come to a consensus. Um, we will be breaking ground for the Public Works Division on April 1st. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to it. We haven't started the planning. I'm not sure if the public is going to be invited or by how many. I know it will be outdoors, of course. So um, yeah, you know, with you, Councilman Krause and Madam President, you know, this finally coming to fruition, um, couldn't be a better time, you know, and to have this up and running before the snow flies next year is even better yet. So yeah. thanks for all your help. And, yeah, uh, the uh, uh, Councilman uh, uh, Cockhill was uh, kind enough to join me in hosting a public meeting to sort of announce the, uh, the new uh, strategy for the new fourth division. And if anyone would like to see uh, some of the plans uh, and uh, to uh, hear what was said at that meeting, uh, the South Pittsburgh Reporter did a great story on it and it's very easy to find, sopghreporter.com. And uh, you can uh, see uh, all the good stuff that's coming to the new fourth division. And uh, I'm as excited as the councilman and the council president to, uh, to kick it off on April 1, yeah. And I'm just going Thanks. to thank you, thank you both for working with the administration who made the decision to open or to rebuild um, a division so that it helps all of our areas in the Southwest. So yeah. thank you to the, to the two of you, but also to the mayor who made that decision. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have any other members? Madam President. Yes, <clears throat> Burgess? Yes, um, I guess because I'm had a birthday recently and I'm starting to you know, feel my age. Yeah. I taught my first college class in 1979. So you can do the math. I have been teaching for a very, very, very long time. Um, um, the college I'm at now is actually, I think one, two, one, two, three, mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. Fourth college maybe teaching. So um, and I've been there. 30 years. Um, so um, I enjoy people of all ages coming and giving me their concern, whether it's in public comment, whether it is in person. Um, I do. Um, I, I have been fighting this fight. I have been serving in a black church in Homewood for, what is it, 36 years now? And have been fighting for the empowerment of African-American people in neighborhoods my whole career. My first job, my first full-time job was as a pastor, right? And I have been fighting that fight for a long time. Um, as I get older now, I, I just, I find it amusing sometimes, right? That, um, um, that over the last perhaps 18 months, I'm glad and, and excited that, that younger people have found their voice over the last eight, 18 months. And um, I'm enjoying um, their, their newfound uh, understanding of that racism and um, um, is a problem. Um, in our country and in our city. I'm, I'm glad they have, over the last 18 months, um, um, found out something that I have lived, um, experienced, taught, advoc advocated for in 40 years. And, and so 
it always, I find it, I do find it, I do find it somewhat, it does amuse me a little bit um, because I think it's, it's um, we have to do this together. They give me great optimism, um, great hope in the future, really. They do give me great hope in the future. Uh, but as an older guy who have done, who's done this for a very long time, um, sometimes I do find it curious um, when those people who live not in my community at all, uh, perhaps are not even African American, right? And do not have my shared experience. It doesn't make their opinion any more valid. But I must admit, I must admit, it does somewhat um, tickle me. I find it curious um, when they decide to lecture me um, um, after a few months of their um, um, awakeness on the needs of African Americans and African American communities. I do find it, I do find it um, refreshing, right? And, and I'm excited by it, right? I have, you know, I have kids that are young adults and I know how passionate they can be. And their passion gives me hope. I'm about to leave the scene, um, but I do find it, it find it, I do find it curious um, because they come at it in such, um, in such a way that those of us who have been doing this for a very long time um, 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 they seem to forget that we've been around a long time doing this and that there's, we do have a sense of this too. And so they're going to take over and we, you know, I'm going to decrease and I hope as much as I can to teach them. And I, I will spend some time doing that of sharing with it to the extent they're interested. I'll teach them what I've learned. You know, I was, I'm old enough. I am old enough to have known and worked with Bird Brown. I knew Bird. I was there. I get lifties and screw here with him um, chatting when he began to his campaign for mayor. I was there. He used to come to my church. Um, I, I know members of his family. He would come to my church and, and encourage me as a young preacher. Um, he would never tell me he was coming. He'd just show up. And I, I had great respect for him. And so I think we, we go for it together um, in this age of trying to figure out um, the Racial Equity Commission is a good thing. It's the first time in the history of our city that we're actually calling it what it is, that we have a racial problem. Uh, we, do, we have a poverty problem in Pittsburgh, but if you're black and poor, it's worse. We do have an issue with the LGBT community and their rights, but if you're black and you're LGBT, it's worse. We do have problems with women in our culture, the way we treat them. But if you're a black woman in this culture, you're invisible. And especially if you're a single mother, your, your, your outcomes are worse. And so now we began this uncomfortable conversation. Finally, after all these years of waiting, no more talking about diversity or equity and all the other words that we use because it made others feel more comfortable. Now we talk about the real issue in Pittsburgh, which is racial equity. It's how we treat black people. That is the time. This is our whole life. Is a, our whole life has led me to this moment where finally, after all these years, I can listen and talk about the, how Black people are being affected. You know, all these years I had to listen to other people telling me it's not our time, right? It's the time for this other group. <laughs> well, it's always been our time. That is the original, the, racism is the original sin of our country. And in this city, how we have treated African-Americans is the single greatest inequality of our city. It, has, it should have always been our focus. It has not been, it's a shame that it's taken all these years for us to come to this place where now, for the next, as long as I live now, hopefully this will be our focus. This was my focus always all my life. This will now hopefully be our shared focus until we do right by the African-Americans of this city, we have failed. As long, every time we build market rate housing without realizing that it is segregated housing. Market rate housing is segregated housing in Pittsburgh. Every time we build it, no matter how we think about it, no matter how we view it, when you build market rate housing, you're building segregated housing in Pittsburgh. We are a segregated community and, and we have to stop it. That means we have to intentionally put affordable housing in places where there are no affordable housing now, intentionally, carefully, systematically. We must build mixed income housing, not just in black communities, but we must, we must build mixed income housing in every community. And that's how, and, and so that's, 
part of it. But we have to. I'll, I'll stop talking. I just, I, I didn't mean to go on this this trail, but I, I just find it. I just, it tickles me. That's the right word. I find it delightful that young people are so excited, especially um, some of those people who are not African American, and that they assume that those of us who have been in the struggle a long time have done nothing and know nothing about their own communities. I, I just find it. And I know that. I mean, I have a 22-year-old daughter who who is passionate too, so I get it. But I find it, I do find it amusing sometimes. And I just want to—I don't say it all the time, but I, I do find it amusing. And I like talking to them though, because I, hopefully I can bring to them a historic perspective. Um, you know, I'm old enough to have met Daddy King. I'm old enough to have known um, Wyatt Walker. I'm I'm old enough to have these figures or these historic figures are not just history to me. They're part of my reality. I, I knew them, talked to them, walked with them. And so um, hopefully we can share that perspective and together we can make this city um, a city for all. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Reverend. Any other members? Seeing none, can I have a motion to excuse any absent members? Um, approve the minutes and adjourn the meeting. So moved. Can okay. All in favor? Aye. Oh, aye. Have a good day, everyone. Meetings adjourned. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody.